Okay, so I am under the truck right now. This is the rear wheel, and I am going to show you the parts of the disc brake. So this this piece right here that the the uh, brake chambers are mounted to. Got your air hoses coming in for, for, onto your brake chamber. That's mounted directly to the brake caliper. And that's this piece right here. These right here. This is one pin, and there's a cap right over here, just like it on the on the top side for the second pin. Right here, we have a brake retaining spring, and this is a brake retaining shaft. This piece right here, that's right up close to the <clears throat> this this piece right here is the brake rotor. The brake pads squeeze the rotor. There's one on each side of the rotor. They actually squeeze the rotor using pistons right right here and right here. There's two pistons on this one. There's a shaft comes through right here, pushes on both of those pistons. It squeezes the brake rotor between the two brake pads and creates the stopping force that, that um, stops the truck so the inspection requires you to look at the brake pads and of course we don't have very many miles on the truck so we still have plenty of brake pad you look at the brake rotor <clears throat> now I'll uh, move around to the back side and here's a better picture of the brake rotor um, it's it's smooth it might have lines in it but they're okay you can't feel them um, they're just like a car. Cars have the same thing, brake rotor, brake caliper, and the, the brake rotor is actually attached to the wheel through, through the hub, and that's where your wheel bearings, and it rotates with the wheel. This, this part is part of the uh, brake caliper mounting and it remains stationary with the axle so whenever you apply clamping force to the to the rotor that energy has a place to go and it's into this bracket and into the the chassis of the of the truck so right here is one of the the sliding pins that I've that I've talked about the brake rotor or the caliper excuse me the caliper actually slides on this on this pin. There's one here and there's one up here on the top. So they they actually slide on those pins. Well there are some rubber let me see if I can get a good picture of them. The accordion looking thing there that's the rubber boot that that I'm referring to that was the bottom one and uh, let's see if I can't can't get oh yep, yep there's the top one so you need to look at those boots and look and they're pretty hard to look at they're hard to see but <clears throat> with if you ever did a wheel off inspection you can you can see them pretty pretty easy you can get around them a lot easier without the tire and wheel on, on there so you got to look at those boots to make sure there's no cracks or holes in those boots for road debris to get into. Um, like I said, once once the d debris gets in there, it can seize that caliper to those shafts, and that can create a very bad day for you. So. I'll, uh, I'll move up to the steer axle and maybe things are a little bit easier to see up there. Okay, so now this this is the, the steer axle and you can see the brake chamber is on top of the of the spindle instead of around on the back side like it was on the on the drive axle. The reason it's on the on the back side on the drive axle is because you'd have the frame really cl too close for the brake chamber so the so the the brake chambers have to go in between the spring and the frame rail in order they just have to have more room they uh, 
steer axle brake chamber is smaller so it uh, and there's more room because you only have a single tire here so it, it it's just obvious that it's pretty much um, there's a lot more room up here so so they can place the the brake chamber wherever they need it again you have the the slider pins they they're under a cap the cap does come off there's one on both ends of it See it. This cap right here, and that is the the slider pins, and of course the caliper. It's uh, it's quite a large affair. It's this whole piece right here. Again, you have two pistons on the steer axle, just like you do on the drive axle. <coughs> um, again, the uh, brake pads are up in here and you can see the rotor there so let's see uh, let me get under the truck and I'll see if I can get those um, boots we need to okay look. now we're, we're coming in from the underneath the front of the truck you can see the parts that I've described you got the brake rotor Ooh. Okay, we got the brake rotor here. Again, it's just like the rear wheel. Um, we've got the bracket that the caliper mounts to. As you can see, it's bolted solid to the to the spindle. You have the brake caliper, and this is the the part that slides on these pins that are that are through through here. And if you look right up in there, you can see that rubber boot right there. And looks like we're okay for no damage. Um, we have the, the brake chamber and the, the dual piston brake caliper. So that's, that's basically the parts for disc brakes and what you need to inspect. Um, like I said, you, you look at the brake pads, you can see those from the top. Um, the, the, the drive axle, it'll be around on the back side. Just look in there and you'll be able to see how thick the pads are. And with disc brakes, you're allowed to get, the legal minimum is actually thinner than the legal minimum is on drum brakes so so you can actually wear the pads out farther than you could if if it was on the in drum brakes so there you have it if you have questions or comments please post them and we'll read them and respond to them if we need to otherwise be safe out there